So let's take a look at our nav data bar. On the right hand side, you can see we can collapse and show our nav data bar. We can also add or remove different objects from it. If we right click on the nav data, gives us the option to add. And we can look at either sensor information as a data box, sensor information as a gauge, cursor information, target information for AIS targets, and many others. So let's add another piece of data to our nav data bar. Either right click or click on these three dots on the bottom. This brings up the add to nav data sidebar menu. So today we are going to add the speed over the ground information. So we're going to click on sensor nav data and we're going to select speed over the ground. Click OK. And now you can see that I have the nav data there. We can rearrange things by clicking and dragging. And if there is a piece of information that we always want to see on the chart, whether we show or hide the nav data box, we can add that as well. Right click, add nav data, and we're going to add the depth information. And we're going to remove this from the nav data bar and place it in the bottom of the screen. And I want to make that more prominent, so I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to increase its size. And this can be done on any page. If it's removed from the data bar, you'll see that it does not go with the screen. In Time Zero version 4, we have a new active route nav data feature where we select that, and that will give us information that is pertinent to our new route. This will take up or collapse depending on the amount of information displayed on the data bar. If I right click and remove our COG graphic display, you'll see that my route list has gotten bigger and is now scrollable. I can add AIS target information. If I right click, I can increase the number of targets displayed. And I have different options for sorting them or displaying their names. I also have the ability to have just a single bearing to waypoint or go to information. If I don't want to have this much space with the route nav data. And if I right click on that bearing to waypoint box, I can add a second piece of data. So let's say bearing to waypoint and ETA. And now it'll alternate back and forth between bearing to waypoint and ETA. And we can actually do that for any of the nav data boxes. So let's say I wanted heading and I would like to alternate that with course over ground. So you'll see that the heading will switch to course over ground and then back. This is useful if you want to have more information but don't have enough space for everything you'd like to display. You'll notice that if I switch to the planning workspace, by default we're going to have information on weather. And this is a good one where we can have tide and current information. 